Hello, today we're going to take a look at an additional setting in the accessibility features of the iPad that will assist many of your students and be a good universal design for learning tool as well. This feature that we're going to look at is the text to speech feature that is built into the accessibility. So if you go to the settings and general and then scroll down to the bottom and click on accessibility, you'll see under the top vision settings the option to change speak selection and speak auto text. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the speak auto text. When you turn this feature on as a student is typing, if the auto correct is turned on and a word is replaced by the iPad, it will say that word out loud. And this is really useful as students are typing. A lot of times they'll just assume that whatever word is being replaced by the computer is the correct word and a lot of times the words are similar enough that it's throwing in a word that isn't the exact word. Hearing it said out loud will alert those students that the word that's been replaced is not the word that they intended and then they can go back and make that correction. Speak selection is the true text-to-speech feature that's built into the iPad and so when it's turned off you'll see that these features are completely gone but when I turn it on I have several choices that I can uh, take a look at. One is dialects so I can go in and I can choose some different uh, voice settings. I'm going to recommend generally for US English if you're in the United States and then you can change the speaking rate and as I do the slider you'll notice that it will speak selection reads selected content automatically kind of show you how fast it is. I find that it reads pretty fast by default, so Speak selection reads selected content. I recommend bringing it down probably to about a quarter of the full rate. And then another great new feature that's part of iOS 6, once you've upgraded your iPad, is the ability to have word highlighting as well. And from a universal design for learning standpoint, that word highlighting is really unique because you can teach students to use the speak selection feature but have the volume turned off. Some students just like to have that focus to have the word tracking but not to actually listen to the computer reading and have that automated voice. So it can be used as a text to speech where the audio is turned on and with the word highlighting or by muting the volume you can then retain that highlighting of words. So let's go take a look at how that um, is going to look inside the Safari browser. So we have an article here uh, about the NASA Curiosity rover on Mars. And to go back to one of the features we looked at in a previous video, I'm going to click on the reader feature because the text-to-speech does work in here. And just a reminder that I could go in and I could change the font size, make the font a little bit larger and easier to read. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold on the first word of my sentence and then I'm going to drag this bar here down at the bottom to the first paragraph. And then I'll have these choices here of either copying the text or clicking speak. Gray colored rock, clay minerals and mudstone collected by NASA's Curiosity rover suggest the conditions necessary to support life once existed on Mars, according to NASA. And there you can see it's not only reading the text out loud but also highlighting each word as it goes along. This feature is also really handy when students are writing their own text and I'm going to open up the note app now and show you. This is a great activity to do in your classroom to help all students learn how to use the text-to-speech feature and the word highlighting feature as a universal tool. So when they are um, writing anything in a note-taking app they can then check for errors and spelling by listening to their writing and reviewing it. So I'm going to highlight what I have written here. And I do this almost any time I write an email or a blog post. I actually go ahead and run uh, a text-to-speech on it and listen because I have a tendency to leave out words. So let's go ahead and listen. This is a new note. I am checking for errors. Sometimes forget WRDS. So I notice here that I've left out the word I in between forget. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And then I also, I have the little underlining here that says that I've misspelled the word, but hearing it also alerts me to the fact that I did not actually spell a word. So I'm going to go and correct that now. Another feature that you can use these for as a universal design for learning technique is to have students go ahead and listen, going back to the article, have them go ahead and listen to maybe just the first paragraph or couple of paragraphs and asking all students to do this. And to remind them that sometimes when we start reading, because we're unfamiliar with what the content is going to be about and we may not know all of the words, it's helpful to hear and listen to part of it first and that way we have a good foundation for reading the rest of an article or a story. And asking all students to do that helps students to really understand what it's like to be a reader and what it is when we first start reading something that we're unfamiliar with. Then those who want to continue to listen to it would have that option and those who want to read independently have a good foundation for reading it successfully. So those are some of the universal design for learning strategies that you can apply to the accessibility features, particularly the text-to-speech features built into the iPad.